We're going to go ahead and try and build this lesson four exercise two part. Um, it's like a clevis bracket or some sort. I want to try and give you easy techniques to quickly build it. Um, you should have tried this on your own. Hopefully you had some luck, but uh, we'll see if I can give you some tips on how to make this go simpler for you. If I can get a new part created. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you look at the orientation of this lesson four exercise two part you're doing, I'm going to go ahead and rename that. <clears throat> they drew it on the XY plane, so you could create an axis whatever coordinates they give you and then draw it on the XY plane because of the orientation they gave it to us in. It's not a problem. We'll go ahead and uh, I like to try and make it simple, create some rectangles. And uh, I'm going to create a rectangle down on this corner here and you'll see why. How tall is that piece? I think it's two inches tall. You can always modify the numbers later. So I'll make a piece that looks something like that. You can always, again, modify the numbers later. We'll pop into the quick trim command. You could use the profile command just as easy to build this profile. Sometimes I have a hard time getting that double click to work on the quick trim. Let's do a sketch analysis. You'll see that you have the isolated profiles. So just go ahead and remove those so you have one close profile. So now we're now ready to go ahead and constrain. I'm going to use the auto constrain technique and auto constrain the top half and then auto constrain the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and use the bigger lines as my datum. So I know we typically go left to right, but looking in this part, I like to use the bigger surfaces for my datums for the shot to start with. I'm going to go ahead and go into contact and contact the bottom line to this vertical line and then this one here to here and when I go to analysis it's going to tell me it's all constrained I'm done now the reason why I did the auto constraint on the top is I want to control the flanges and uh, this notch if there's usually when you have a clevis something's going to probably go inside that so I want to control the size of that notch um, hopefully you saw how easy that was to constrain everything else is going to be dimensioned off the datum I want to maintain a constant gauge thickness all the way around here of a half inch so it's pretty simple straightforward to do um, again the reason why I want to maintain this is I see some people do a dimension like this. And then they get rid of this dimension. So I'll use it as a reference. Now, if something's going to fit in the middle of this, and you dimension it this way, well, worst case scenario, the shortest this number could be is 1.47. And if you're working with 30 thou tolerance, this could go up to 5.3, which means that this is now only a 0.94 notch inside of here. Even though I held my tolerance at 30 thou here and 30 thou here, I've got 60 thou less material to work with to have whatever went inside of it. If they build it the same way, you're going to have 0.12 over a tenth of an inch uh, of tolerance buildup. So bear in mind when you're building something uh, especially if you know what it's going into how does it affect other parts so I'm gonna get rid of these dimensions and leave it chained like this we'll go ahead and exit out and build a pad I know normally I tell you to build Oh, I can't believe I did that build the pad and go in the negative direction because the front's on the front backs on the back and all that but 
in hindsight, looking at this part, uh, I think this is two inches long. My biggest surfaces are on the back, so I want my axis to be on the back of this. So datum A would be here, datum B would be here, and datum C would be this back face. So when I go into my ISO view, the back face is really going to be my datum. All right, I'll drop the sketch into the part body where it belongs, and we'll go ahead and go into refine and use the chamfer command. So I'll chamfer this edge and this edge at the same time, and we'll do, whoops, and this edge at the sa same time. Make sure you grab the edges, not the faces, and we'll go one inch by a 45 degree angle. Now next we're going to put in a hole, and in the book it tells you to dimension from the top flange, but if I'm doing datum dimensioning, you might uh, put your hole and measure from this bottom edge where my datum A is and measure from datum C. Put my hole right about here. Now, it's a half inch hole, I believe. Uh, whatever size, you can change it later. Now, that's a blind hole going to a certain depth. If I change a blind hole up to next, it's going to go all the way through that flange. In this case, I want to go through both flanges, so what I can say is up to last, and it'll pop that hole through both sides. I'll go ahead and go into my ISO view. And there's your part. And that's pretty much what that clevis is going to look like. Notice where my axis is. So you build your local axis where you want it to be. Start on the XY plane. And you want to build a pad, a chamfer, and a sketch. And inside the sketch, I use the bottom right corner as my axis orientation. Okay, hopefully that helps you get exercise two done. And maybe you saw a little quicker and easier technique than what you have done.